Hi there, folks. It's Chris and Sen here. Morning, everyone. We are. Uh, we've got chilly hands and noses. We've been inside a vacant commercial building for the last hour. We've taken the morning to walk around this former shop uh, with our trades, the plumbing and the electrician side of things, for us to understand what we'd need to do to split and separate part of the back building that would be unneeded all because we want to understand if this is viable for us to gut out and line up for a, a retailer to come in. And we're having conversations right now with a commercial surveyor to see if we can line up uh, an agreement in advance before we commit to putting an offer in the place. And hopefully that could be something that can come to fruition. It's gonna take a lot of conversations, negotiation and work, but it'll be well worth it if we can. Absolutely. And just one of the things, just pointing out, uh, you can see some of it in this building as well. When you are looking at these old buildings and what's going to be involved, being really careful with your numbers on the conversion cost. There's a lot of asbestos through this building. This is an old bakery, so they've got a lot of hot works uh, areas through the back. So it's knowing things like that. That's an expensive thing to take out. Key thing getting your trades in early as well um, is making sure that you know what it's going to take to split the services if you're going to be tight or split in the building. So as well as getting the tenants lined up for the downstairs, knowing what's going to be involved to, to maximise the whole building and make sure you've got all your, all your angles covered before you commit to anything. And to that very point, there are actually three flats above this building, which is included in the, the entirety of what could be a, a great mixed use investment. So we've taken time to go through each of those flats to make sure that lopping off part of the back of the commercial building where we saw some major um, electric supply cables wouldn't impact upstairs. And thankfully, we're pretty confident that each of those flats have their own individual electricity supply and gas supply. Yeah, the only additional gas supply that would need to be taken from a new meter would be to do the attic conversion. So that's on top of the three flats. There would be a, a fourth residential property up on, the, up on the fourth floor in the attic. So it's all pretty exciting. We'll do a quick walk through to see what else is in this, this uh, front part that we'd look to create as retail. This used to be a former cafe and it goes back here where there's toilets at the rear and that would be the back end of the building. And then this goes through to an area that is kitchen prep and that could be office space for a retailer. So we'd look to open up these, these walls which are all just partition walls make this into a big open space retail area for the potential client we have in mind. We would need to rip all the shelving units out. We'd put in a dropped ceiling up here. Um, what was it you were saying about the kind of lighting we'd put in? So yeah, we've got a dropped metal frame ceiling, the kind of grid ceilings that you see in a, in a lot of shops have got panel lighting. It means you can run all your, all your electrical services, air conditioning and whatnot on cable trays, all fixed to the existing ceiling. That just means that's all hidden away. We've got the height in here to be able to do that. And then um, taking some of these partitions out that Sensor has shown you, that means that we can continue that right through what would be the main shop area. So these are all the considerations we're doing with our due diligence up front to understand how much would it cost us to get this ready for the tenant? So that if we do our calculations based on what would the, the rent be annually and factor in a conservative yield between eight and a half to 10 percent, what's the end valuation range we're looking at? And if we then finance that at 70 percent loan to value, how much are we getting back out from refinance? And from that 70 percent amount, we'd be taking off our conversion cost, our refurb cost, so that we can go as far to or as close to getting to uh, no money left in on the commercial side of things. And then we do the same with calculating the residential bricks and mortar value for upstairs, what it cost us to convert it and work backwards to an offer price. Key thing, key thing working out how much is going to have to be tied up in the building to work out where you can be with an offer. With any commercial building, there'll be, a, there'll be an asking price, but the building is only worth what it is worth. So you have to really be careful with your numbers uh, on what all this stuff's going to be before you go thinking about making an offer. So we're doing a lot of comparative analysis, looking at both rents, as much as we can find in speaking to surveyors along the, the street and in the area, trying to figure out average rent per square foot for retail. And obviously it's going to vary depending on the covenant of the tenant that comes in as to what yield for valuation purposes we get. And on the residential side, we can get a ton of comparables by looking at right move sold prices 
and comparable flats currently for sale to get cost per square meter and look at the different end finishes. So a lot of comparative analysis is going into this and by the end of the week, we should be in a position to know where we stand with a kind of yay or nay for uh, an offer on it. Yeah, a lot of the numbers we've already done, so it's a case of going back over them, making sure they all stack up, having done a bit more of a thorough analysis and spending a bit more time getting to walk around the building today. Cool, so, yeah. I hope that's been informative and uh, that's it for us for today. Have a good day.